If you're looking to get maximum cinematic quality from your AI videos, you are in the right place. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get maximum cinematic quality from your AI videos. The outputs that you'll get using this workflow will rival some of the very best projects that you've seen. Let's get to it. So first things first, we need to create our AI video. But there are a lot of video generators that are out there. Right now, my two favorite tools are Google VO2 and Clink. There are different ways that you can use these tools. VO2 is in early access, but one hack is to go over to Crea, which is an online website that basically puts a lot of video generators together. And if you go to their website, you can go to generate and then go to video and you will end up on this page. Down at the bottom left, you'll see a menu and you can go ahead and select any model you want. But for this one, I will go ahead and select VO2. I should also note you can select Kling 1.6 as well. So we'll select Google VO2, type in our prompt and go ahead and click generate. You can also generate using Kling directly. If you go to the Kling AI website, you can type in your prompt, just double check that you're using Kling 1.6 and you can adjust all of these settings as you see fit. Definitely make sure you have professional mode on and go ahead and click generate. So we can take a look at these videos here. I have option number one, which yeah, looks pretty good. There's really great physical dynamics with the smoke and the fire. We have option number two here, which looks good. Option number three, which probably looks the most realistic out of all of them, although it does have kind of uh, an orange color grade to it. And then we have option number four here, which does look good, but I should note that that road there has a car driving on it. So I don't know how realistic that would be if this was a medieval project. For our purposes, I'm going to use this video clip that I generated with Google VO. You can see it actually looks pretty good. The camera movement looks nice. There's nice fidelity in the rocks and the background. The fire dynamics look pretty good but it is just kind of soft overall, right? Most of the time when you're working on an AI video project, it'll have this kind of soft film over it that really makes it come across as not very realistic. Well, there's actually a new tool called Topaz Starlight that can take that AI generated footage, run it through the model, and basically give you better quality on the back end. Using Starlight is super simple and they actually give you three video clips completely for free. We are not sponsored by Topaz, we just really love their tool. I highly recommend checking it out. So we're here on the Starlight website and you can see there's a button at the bottom that says upload video. So we'll go ahead and upload our video. Again, this is the video clip that we will be using. I should note that it's in 720p, it's not full HD. So we'll go ahead and click open. And when you're ready to render, go ahead and click the render button. So while we wait, I just want to let you know that we offer AI filmmaking and advanced AI filmmaking courses over at Curious Refuge. If you've ever wanted to put together a professional AI project, I highly recommend checking out those workshops. We've partnered with some of the best AI artists in the world, and we teach artists at every major studio. We would love to have you inside of the program. So the generation from Topaz video will take about 20 minutes, but it's totally worth it. Here is the quick result. So here's the original. You see how soft it is. There's just some distortion. Hopefully it's coming through on YouTube here. And then here is the result afterwards. You can see there's actually fidelity in the bricks and the landscape and the background. You can see the particles coming from the fire. It really is just coming across as much more realistic. Even the flag in the distance there, that's a very small element, but it looks like it has flag dynamics and it's doing a really good job. So now we have this 1080p video, but we want to get even more quality from it. Well, in order to up-res it, we're going to be using a tool called Topaz Video AI. It is a paid tool, but if you want maximum quality, there's really no better video up on the market. So I'm going to take our video footage here from Google VO. We'll just drag and drop it into Topaz Video AI. And we're going to take a look at the top right here. There's output resolution. So go ahead and click on that drop down, and we will select 
4K because we want to have maximum resolution. Now, I should note that typically if you're working on a 4K project, you may want to output the resolution as 5K, 6K, even 8K, and then scale it down. It really depends on how powerful your computer is. I'm going to do 4K just for the example of this video, but again, try to get just maximum resolution if you can. So under AI model here, there's going to be a lot of different options. The two that I think you should know about is one, the default Proteus model, which gives you generally good results no matter what video clip you upload. The second one is the Thea model. Thea is going to give you even better details and quality, but it is even more intense on your machine, so most of the time you can usually get away with the Proteus model. And I also like going in here and turning down recover detail because I don't want this video system to do things like over sharpening or deblurring in an unnatural way. And the last setting that I want to point out is under codec settings here. If you're editing a high resolution project, you don't want to use H.264. H.264 is a video file format for delivering to the internet. It's not an intermediate codec that you want to use in the editing process. So you can go ahead and select that codec there and go ahead and select ProRes, which is a better format for editing. And under Profile, there's a lot of different options. Technically speaking, the highest quality is 4444 XQ quality, but it is a lot and you really don't need to use that quality uh, whenever you are working with footage from an AI system because it doesn't have all of the color information that you would typically need to have that wide of a color space. So I'm going to do 422 HQ and we'll hop back over here to adjustments. Make sure that our export as button is selected. Select where you want to export and export your footage. And after a few minutes, we have this result here that looks so nice. It really is coming across as very cinematic and realistic. Obviously, there are small things that we may want to change, and it really comes more from iteration. For example, the fire, maybe it's flickering a little fast. Well, to change that, we probably would want to go into the prompting process on the front end and make sure that we're working with a video clip that is just ideal for what we're trying to output. The team at Curious Refuge put together a few other examples here for you. In fact, we'll include a link below this video for you to check them out yourself. We have this one here of this woman speaking and what feels like a high budget drama here. And yeah, that looks incredibly cinematic and realistic. It did a very good job here. We have the shot here of this UFO flying off into the distance. And aside from some light artifacting on some of the vegetation here, it actually did a pretty good job. We also have this video footage here of this like Victorian house on fire. And yeah, it looks pretty good. I think the physics in the fire could be improved, but again, that comes more from iteration. We have video footage here of this astronaut doing some gardening. And aside from the warping of the fingers there at the beginning, the second half actually looks pretty good. Now, I'm not an astronaut, but I'm pretty certain that if you're covered with an astronaut suit, you're probably not supposed to touch things with your bare hands. It's probably like an airlock problem there, but you know, you get the idea. And then finally, we have the shot here of this astronaut walking into this, I guess, like space age greenhouse. And you can see there's just tons of fidelity in the plants and in the details. It's coming across as very realistic. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video. As always, be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And if you have ideas for a future video, be sure to let us know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.